been glassing since about a half hour before sunrise and I kept hearing elk bugle last night. And there they are right across the canyon. All right guys, 8.30. I've been glassing well over two hours. And I finally spotted two bucks. They're the only two deer I've seen. They're on a completely different mountain than what I'm on. And this gets into that long, extreme long range glassing stuff I wrote about in the book. And um, they look pretty good. They're def two definitely the best bucks I've seen. I still don't think they're real big, but they're probably at that two and a half to three mile distance right now. I don't have the sun behind me. I have it at a right angle. It's over my right shoulder. So the visibility is not the best. And when you're looking at bucks at this far away, you just got to stare and you're waiting for them to walk between contrasting light and darkness, like shadows and, you know, trees and stuff like that. And you'll just get little glimpses of their antlers. And really all you're doing is just looking at their antlers relative to their body. I'm not counting points. So, my eyes are so blurry. From the time I got the spot and scope on them, it was probably 20, 25 minutes ago, I have hardly even blinked. Because you can't. When they're that far away, you need every second to look at them. And and now they've crossed the top, they've got off the sunny slope, I'll show you here in a minute, they've got off the sunny slope and they've got down into the timber on the west facing side of the mountain. I'm kind of looking at the southeast side. And um, they're good bucks. This early in the season they're not good enough to go after. But I've definitely seen the two best bucks I've seen. What's this, three days I've been glassing? Four days? Three and a half days? Um, and that's why and that's why I talk about extreme long-range glassing so much, because when you're where there's not a lot of bucks, you got to look at so much country, so much country to even find them. And again, sometimes they're not big enough to go after, but definitely feel good about spending, what have I spent, two and a half hours this morning, three last night. I've spent five and a half hours here. I've only seen four bucks, but I've seen two of the best ones. And so if I was in the killing mode, ready to kill one, my odds just skyrocketed because now I could go hunt some exact bucks. Instead of just wandering around hoping I run into one, I could be exactly where at least one good buck is. Um, if it was a little later in the season, then I'd be all over him. I'd have these horses packed up and I'd be headed over there. Um, spend the rest of my couple of days over there, but I think I'm going to keep looking. Um, but I wanted to share all that with you. I know it's kind of long-winded, but that's how it happens in real deer country. Um, when you're not looking at a ton of bucks, this is how you got to do it. Okay, those bucks were right in the middle of the screen when I spotted them, right where that uh, spruce is. It's got the shadow going off to the left. They were feeding right below that in kind of some of those little sagebrush coolies. It took them about 25 minutes. They walked diagonally up the hill at about 11 o'clock. They fed slowly through that sagebrush. They would stop by the trees, feed in the shadows, and then they went over that ridge about where that burnt tree is that's got the snow-stunted spruce growing at the bottom. Well, I got camp set up. I'm sleeping under the stars again. I actually talked to my wife first time in four days. She said the forecast is clear, so it's warmed up about 10 degrees since I got here. That's why I've been sleeping under the stars. And Man, nothing cooler than waking up and seeing God's handiwork like that. Um, I'm going to head up to the top. I'm camped down low in the basin, you can see, just right here in the timber. Top's probably a thousand foot climb. I'm actually going to leave the horses down here and go up on foot tonight. Sometimes the bucks are right up there. In fact, I'm probably talking a little loud. Um, so I'll, I'll hike up tonight and um, just make sure there's no bucks right on top. Um, Got to find one tonight or in the morning. It's supposed to pull out tomorrow. I saved one day just in case I kill one tomorrow so I can get one out or maybe we see a toad. We can squeeze another morning out, but basically need to make it happen tonight or in the morning. So here goes, Lord willing.
Stu's got a double main beam. He's like an eight or nine point on that side, but he's just regular on the other. Okay, they're 140 yards. I've got about a half an hour of light left. So they just fed under the knob. I'm gonna sneak around here. It's so noisy. I don't know if I can do it or not. But I gotta try. something was up. Oh well. He wasn't that great anyways. He just had a cool double main beam. I still feel the seam in the morning. They don't look spooked too bad. 